Savvy drive. Savvy drive indeed. Out of Ryan Blaney. Winning to Martinsville. Punching his ticket to defend his championship alongside his front tire changer. Ryan Flores today. We're going to break down that. Not even a Hail Mary. They went and earned it the old-fashioned way. Drove from the back to the front and got the dub. And they're racing for another championship. More of that. Tempers flaring Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Martinsville delivered, and we're going to deliver here on Stacking Paints for you. Buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. Stacking them deep, selling them cheap. It tastes like gasoline, rubber, and victory. We're just out here stacking paints. Well, 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 guys. Here we are. Core of the joy alongside one-time champion, potentially two, Ryan Flores, front tire changer, Ryan Blaney's Ford Mustang. Congratulations, buddy. Let's go. What a day. Let's freaking go. Racing for another championship. I'll tell you this. You came in today, and you got the eye of the tiger look. Martinsville is a grind, dude. So if you survive that, if you can win there, it is so challenging. Not only it looked like an absolute war zone on the racetrack for dude, you it was, guys. It was awesome. And then the pits, it's just like being – I mean – it's like being in the trenches. It, it's week. just like, but that, this would, week, that, that is if that that's what trench warfare is like. You're just let's not a, let's not assume that let's, we know I'm, what trench warfare is like. I'm not going to assume, but from the documentaries I watched, that's what it feels like. You got me. we're flying into the charter planes, and then we're jumping over the wall in front of cars. It's not quite that, but yes, I get the in analogy. my world <laughs> that is trench warfare, dude. Um, well, the cars are beaten and bruised, and the the tires that NASCAR another. Let's give a round of applause, Goodyear. Great tire. Uh, great, great, great race. Tires. Great. Don't great let it race. get lost in the sauce that there was much more passing, tire fall off, comers awesome. and goers, and the cars looked like they were straight out of Days of Thunder. At That's the end what of the it race. looked like, dude. It, it was sick. It was so sick, dude. There was rubber everywhere, uh, just dirt down the sides. The, the rubber was like clinging to the to the brake dust on the sides of the car. It looked just like something that out of like 1975, Richard Petty. And, you know, 14 laps ahead of everybody else, all the cars are just sandblasted and awesome. I woke but, up yesterday but, morning um, because it was daylight savings. It's mm-hmm. so like I woke up at like 5 o'clock in the morning. It's like, oh, damn. And I walked out to put my keep my charger in the kitchen. So I walked out there, and the first thing I heard in the morning was my Martinsville clock going off in the office. And I was like. Do you keep it wound all the time? Yeah. All the time? Hell yeah. Mm, I haven't wound mine in about and a I was year. Like, and I was like, oh, yeah. I got yeah. that thing set right where the moon is. Set. I <laughs> it's got a it set. sweet piece, dude. And I was like, oh, yeah. It's time. Like, l- legitimately. Game time. And then Boom. when it was all said and done, I went. Uh, we were walking on the track. I went to go, like, wash my hands. And I looked up in the mirror, and my face was black. After? Like, yeah, it was like black, like Days of Thunder style from the break dust and just from Martinsville. And I was like, earned it. What a day. What a day. From the clock waking you up to leaving this place mm. with a trophy and, you know, the the scars to prove it. It was just like that. That is why you NASCAR, baby. Well, we teased it a little bit. and We're going to get there later in the show. But we want to go from the start of the weekend because Martinsville, as the cutoff race to choose the four championship contenders, is a absolute great race track to do that. So we saw that Friday night in the truck race. Tempers flaring in the trucks and Xfinity. We had some hands thrown. We've had a bunch of different stuff going on. Let's go ahead and roll the tape if you're watching on YouTube here. Front row, green, white, checkered. Christian Eckes had uh, dominated this race, but the 17 was on a tire advantage at this point. So he rolls them, rolls them to the lead off of turn two, a little bit of left for a quarter in the 19. Hadn't seen a truck in front of him all day. Gives them... The business. Some call a dirty move. Well, I, I believe the Matt, 99 the business again. I believe um, Mark Martin didn't take to con this, but, you know, I think it's right. Ra- um, you have to race different when you're trying to punch your ticket for a playoff. Now, I believe Tricon, there's Charles DeNike, who Stuck. big week out of him. I actually talked to him for about 45 minutes on the way up to Martinsville on, on Saturday. Uh, going to Crucci Bubba Wallace next year. Super excited for him. He is a, a top-notch guy. Leading that 19 truck for a championship effort. There it is, 17 and 19. Um, bouncing back and forth off the race. Stay in the man. Can smell beef cooking from a mile away. People are taking selfies with him on Sunday, too. My man's famous. 
And I, I, I gave, <laughs> I all talked I to him. See. I talked to him on Saturday morning. So they're, they're, they're yelling. A all bit I of can see pointing. is Officer Far, Officer Far. Okay, that, with that mustache okay. and the way he looks, he's. I want to lead her a cola. Nah, leader means give me some cola. <laughs> so it means don't run me. I hey. talked to Stan the next day, Saturday. I said, hey man, I wanted to tell you, I appreciate you not getting in the middle of it and letting it play out. And I said, hey, I've even got a rule. I've even got a, a, a recommendation. I feel like you should be wearing a watch with a timer, like 15 seconds. Everybody back. Let them go. Okay. And he says, I'm, I would be down for that. The problem is, is the crew guys get into it. Yeah. And you so can't stop it. You, you can't get off this truck. You get, uh, there's you a get big Justin fellas. White in there and it ain't good. So kudos to, to, to Stan, the man, and his security team. But that was... To, to roll back the tape on that real quick, let's just digest that. Tanner Gray set up Christian Eckes Hang on. and was passing let's, clean... Let's, first off, let's call it the right brother, Taylor Gray. Ta Taylor Gray set him up. Tanner Gray, I heard, also got the business from Dean Thompson. And he got the punched, lab. too. This wasn't, this, wasn't on the, this was not on the camera. For like 12th and 13th, Dean Thompson teammates... Just Dean Thompson just piled Tanner straight in the fence. Boss's kid. I don't know if that's the best opportunity. Maybe he already knows he's going to take his fun token somewhere else next year. Well, that's the thing. You know, we talk a lot about teammates in Xfinity and Truck, but you don't see them work together like they do in the Cup Series. There is a vast difference. Everybody, 99% of truck drivers, 98.5% of Xfinity drivers are all paying to drive these race cars. Yeah. So if they go to Gibbs... They pay to drive Gibbs's race car. Then the guy that's next to them is not their teammate. It's just another guy. Uh, it's almost the guy that you want to beat worse because they're paying the same money to drive that car. Right. When you get to the cup level, guys are getting paid to drive the race cars. Yeah. So you have so to they play do by what the rules. Told. So it's different. Like like you said, it's like pin that thought actually for later in the show. Yeah, it's like going to the go kart track and you have a rental go kart and you're like. You can, if you have a lot of money, you can buy like the fast go car. And then if you got a little bit of money, you buy the Let's not hide from it. Let's just say what it is. So that's what you get. That's why the Xfinity and the truck races are exhilarating at times. And yes. Yes. And teammates just run through each other. Yeah. And you're like, why would they do that? Well, it's just another car to them. So Taylor Gray got moved. I think Tri he set up Christian Eckes clean. Passed and the him, caution him the came top. out. Yeah. And then he got him clean. Again. Again. Now, I think for him, the only thing you could do, and correct me if I'm wrong, is when you kind of pulled down like he did, cleared him tight, and then eased it in the corner, I think you can stay out wide you and could. feed him the left rear and kind of get him on the curb and yep. get drive. So if I was saying anything, and I don't drive these the, things, he does, but no, that that would be where... That is what we talk about in our pre-race prep, is if you're, it's like, instead of a, a real tight block, you can, give, you can give the guy like a three-quarter lane in the bottom... And just kind of choke his exit off and drive off. And then you get even more of a gap the next straightaway. But uh, it's easy to sit here on Monday to talk about it. But in the moment, I think Taylor Gray probably could have rolled a lane high and still would have been able to with, take the tie advantage right off into the sunset. And even then, Christian Eckes had enough points in the bank. He would have still been a championship four yeah. contender as well. Yeah. And then Christian Eckes, he uh, got the 99 too. So he went like, if you're gonna go, you gotta go. Commit. If you're gonna go, just you gotta go full Austin Dillon mode. Yep, <laughs> take no prisoners. But I'm if going. going to. Hey, if you're going down that road, you better win. That's it. You better yeah. win. If you're gonna win at all costs, you better win. Because if you do that and you don't win, it's a bad day. That's then you're right. getting yelled at, and you're watching a guy do a burnout. Yeah, and you're like oh no, I did all this for nothing. Double bad day. But Chris Neck, at the end of the day, had a good day, and also. Charles said this, his crew chief. He said, Man, just the energy they bring into Phoenix winning rather than finishing second after having a day like they had is way different so carrying some momentum yeah, from absolutely. martinsville into phoenix as you guys have known previous last year as well as now this year having some some confidence and a little bit of juju if you will rolling into phoenix is a big big deal let's fast forward saturday um eric amarola in the he gets us jesus is the way um, the holy roller 20 he uh toyota camry great storylines coming oh, to this oh, race oh, about who's cars. gonna win who's not gonna win and eric almarola just comes in and says, swept the weekend you kids have fun i'll be, I'll out be here. up here with my clock okay pause the tape if you're watching on youtube so go back so if we go back to the last restart that was the, what, what chandler smith was the most mad about hang on is hang that on, hang on lay some context of who is on the bubble who is where 
who is so whatever. Okay, I got you. The if the eighty one wins, the double zero's out. Okay. The double zero is third. Okay. What the eighty one was so mad about is that the double zero picked fourth behind from him. third. So he chose to pick behind him and root him out of the way because he thought, hey, if the 20 lets his teammate in here, ah. does the old Rochambeau, yeah. lets him in, and the 81 drives off the win, he's in, I'm out. Mm. Double zero, we saw him in his CW fire suit with a wrestling belt yelling at Chandler Smith <laughs> earlier in the year. They were really Where? mad at each other. Where? At Kansas, maybe. I feel like he cost him a race at Kansas. But that's what... That, so this is basically taking the gloves off. You pick... From third, you pick fourth. You give up your lane to Hang make on. sure the eight. You root the eighty one. No, out of the way. okay, okay. Thanks for that context. So, if the double zeros under caution, thinking about his pick, if he's anticipating the twenty, letting the eighty one down, he anticipates being able to roll to the outside. I don't think Cole no, maliciously. He, you think <laughs> he absolutely? I'm drove I'm, in there and slaughtered him to make sure he didn't win. And he told him like, "Yeah, man, that's why." That's oh. why he, oh, he punched did. him. Yeah, That's he was he like, did. yeah, man, shouldn't have, you, you used me up at Kansas. That's what you get, what you get. Hey, love that. The yeah. Colonel. And then he got some sort of punch to the face. I think and, that's what you call it. Yeah, um, I think we, we have the video. That, so did, so. He, but he didn't do, he didn't, did he move him out of the way? Did yeah, he, he shoves him into the corner. Okay. And watch, he doesn't even try. He shoves him up. It goes out of frame, but see how oh, far Oh, they're there? way up in the weeds. So oh, that's okay. what his plan the whole time. I see. Hey. It well, worked. Just went on offense. Here it we worked. go. We got smoke. We got hoods flying everywhere. Yeah. And just Eric, I'm rolling. Right. Okay, here we go. So he comes down to the double zero. He said, this and that. You stink. I, pow. And he laughs at him. Well. Whoever's in the Stuart Hall suit is ready. You oh, ever seen? Smokestead is ready to go, too. Of course he Craig is. Craig Smokestead ain't scared. Hang on. Run, run that punch back one more time. Let's break this down. He kind of led with like the like the heel of his fist. He didn't really lead with the knuckles. And then, remember that video of that guy that punched that kangaroo? And the kangaroo, the kangaroo, <laughs> like the arms go up. That's what. That's what. And then like he kind of looks at him like, "Yo, what are you gonna?" Oh, here we go. Chandler oh, Smith oh. versus Cole Custer. Right, here we go. What are you gonna do about? It? What are you gonna do next? That's what Cole did. That like, was Cole Custer, and he had he had uh, Chandler Smith's playoff hopes in his. In his pouch. <laughs> yep. There it is. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, I mean that's, but that's NASCAR. You know, he felt like we said we saw these guys fighting on on the on pit road a couple weeks ago. I love it. I love Cole Custer. I love when he gets to fight with his mustache and his fire suit fits terribly, so it's even better. Both guys with mustaches uh, were throwing. We're we're pretty pretty upset. We're in some sort of a tussle. Taylor Gray and Cole Custer. I'm Ryan Flores. Join Kim Kuhn and myself each and every week right here at Around the Track. Whether you are going to the racetrack or watching from home, we get you ready for all things national and regional level. And we'll tell you who and what to watch for each week. Plus, we get you ready for the weekend at the racetrack. And Erica will help you place your bets to win some easy money. Be sure to check out Around the Track every Wednesday on NASCAR's YouTube channel. Unfortunately, there was nobody with a mustache on Sunday. Uh, they definitely would have been in the middle, middle of something, too. Let's not get into the whole thing yet. I got to, you know, organize my thoughts for this whole last 15 laps ordeal. Well, let's just start with the playoff implications, and they start on Saturday. Yeah. So you get there, there's a new tire. New tire. Right? So everybody's thinking about what's going to happen, and there's a lot of rubber coming off these tires and a piece of rubber ends up perfectly in the throttle body of the 11 car and sticks the throttle like three quarters away open or whatever it was and in the fence goes the 11 and that's a big setback for their championship dreams now let's listen to the audio here oh that is scary that makes my freaking stomach curl just listen to that like he he kind of like puts his head forward like anticipating the break and then it just keeps going actually a very good job of denny not getting the right front there um 
and those guys worked. They take the, all the bent stuff off. They roll it back to the LIS to see if it got any suspension damage. They fixed damage. the car? Yes, dude. So they didn't have a backup car? That's what I hear. It they Okay, so Jeff just came in. They had a backup car, but it was in Huntersville still. Not so in they were getting it ready at the shop. But here's the thing. You, you take... You have an inventory of cars, and they're all the same, right? But they're not all the same. There's some the tolerances are this way, tolerances yeah. are that way. So they brought their very best piece that they have in the whole fleet of Gibbs, probably yeah. them in the 20, to Martinsville. Yeah. So they had, not that you can do a lot of tricks to the cars, but no, the but devil's so, in the details of these it. things. So they had it worked on, and they had it ready. So they obviously felt like that was their best piece, better than their backup car. So they fixed it there. When you say the detail, details are certain clips, rear clips center sections to get a little more rear travel there's just all these little two three four thousands and you stack all those pennies up and you know it gets you another 60 70 thou left for travel a little bit lighter who knows what it is but yeah they brought their best piece to martinsville denny's one of the best there they were sitting at the top of the board at that point in time in practice so even more of a letdown like oh my god we have the ha fastest car here and now it's augered in the fence but kudos, hats off to Chris Gapehart and that entire 11 team. I saw guys from all the teams, as you'd expect, at JGR yeah. working on that car to get it ready. Um, yeah, that's a, I mean, and you in practice, you had a little incident. I don't know if you have it, but you were second. We were good. You were Our second in good. practice. You were fast. You seemed to work on it, and then you got into it with Brad. Well, I catch Brad from like a half, uh, like a half straightaway back, like two minutes left in practice and I get to about three feet back off of four and I'm kind of like showing left front headlight and he sticks his finger out the window to wave me by then just lifts before the flag stamp like before I was already clear before I was clear yet freaking monster truck left right front up his left rear tire knocked the rack out bent the toe so the guys tried to patch it up and we made we just like Ugh. made a circle and then you know you gotta start in the back and now your day is absolute you're you, any more is long, I mean, there's a lot of comers and goers, but the 11 overcame it because those guys are so fast and Denny's so good. But for, for us to not have a good pit pick, to start that deep in traffic, we also didn't start the race with a good balance. We were super free. Uh, you go down a lap early, and then you're just fighting uphill battle. So uh, then the 20 spun me out. 20 spun you out? Yeah, I, I thought I gave him some – Thought I gave him some room. Oh yeah, I was up here, just running the top. Oh, he got, oh, he a, got, little, got a little loose. Oh, he got way loose. Oh, he spun out. He spun out and then hit me, and I spun it. Oh man, it's like dominoes. Yeah. Okay, so that wasn't malicious. Just grabbed the gear, kept it moving. Man, look at the rubber. We got some of the rubber right here. Hmm. We'll talk about the rubber here in a second. But yeah, that was like the start of what ended up being a real bad day for us. I'm just trying to kind of hang on and get to the first stop. We pulled, we pulled an eighth inch of rear bar shim. Don't tell everybody this. We, we were s slow, so we pulled an eighth inch bar shim, and it was like an entirely different car. That's we cool. go from being the worst car there to like, I don't know, 18th to 20th. We literally kind of drove back. And Devils in the details, dude. It's it's so so fine. And then my ignition started, like. Bop, 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 bop. motor started laying down i'm like what the hell is going on with this thing and it just shut right off uh and oh, then there you are and then they're just then they started like sparking and so it's some smoke behind the dash i'm like oh this, probably, this is not good so then they i thought then they thought there was ecu maybe going bad or hot which generally doesn't happen um and it just we chased it. and then our you know our you said a loose wire somewhere right yeah, the terminals on the back side of the boat switch were loose, so it started grounding out, and we brought it behind the wall. Funny story. In a not funny moment. So we pull this thing behind the wall. Everybody's, like, dejected, right? We had a very good car in practice. We were really – it's my favorite track. It's Chris Lawson, our crew chief's favorite track, and we uh, were expected to go run good there after practice, and we worked hard this week on a simulator. Anyways, we're behind the wall. Day's done. Still want to go out there and finish the race, right, and get – couple of garbage spots if they're out there for a couple points but so i get out and they're because they're in there i'm like let me just get out of this thing just so you guys can work on it so i get out and i go to the hauler i'm like i'm hungry i'm gonna go get a dog no me and leanne had a full-blown argument that i was like i'm gonna go stand in the line the hot dog stand and get me four dogs 
And I'm also going to grab a TV camera and watch them, make them watch me get a dog, and I'll eat a dog, and then I'll get back in the car and go. She's like, "No, like you are not." Ricky Bobby. Hey, I'm over here. That Anybody would, else want to go fast? That's that. That was legitimately going to be me. Like while they were working on my car, I, dude, I was so close. If I had a couple of dollars, like I, I don't know where my wallet was, I would have went to the. I would have went. I wish I'd have thought back. Maybe about they would have given you. Uh, they give it to you on credit. I wish like they, they camera pans over and there I am four dogs please uh, grab my little satchel sit there next to the car she kept your helmet on that could have been dude that could have been a great moment our day's done anyways at least get on tv and get some people laughing uh so we they fixed it we're down 100 laps and you know i don't want to ride around in the rest in the way and and getting anybody's be another one of the ones that was manipulating the championship if you will so yeah. uh, we there is a part of the metric like 15 percent factors into next week a fastest lap so i said lawson put a put an extra pound or two of air in these tires so when they we come out right at the start of the third stage and i was on the opposite side of the racetrack and that's the perfect time to do a fast that's when your fat slap's going to be because the track's green hot tires pick up the rubber yep. everybody puts tires on and i just backed up tell them i'm coming harry and i just did like 10 qualifying laps <laughs> driving the absolute dog out of that thing <laughs> and i was like did i get it yeah you got it man 1999 i was like hell yeah oh let's go sub 20 uh, second lap yeah let's throw go. a heat come get it boys hey <laughs> i'm out there put people, another penny in the people, jar people yes yeah, it people like, are what people, the hell is he doing people are watching like what is this guy doing <laughs> you know, take the grill off these guys are on a macro <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> um so that was like the silver lining of the day fastest slap I don't think we had the fastest car by no means, but we had a – the conditions were uh, – if it's there, take it. Hey, hey, laying down heaters. The other guy that was on a heater early in the race, I thought he was going like full-blown Brian Vickers, was uh, was Josevar. He was just spinning people out at will. He's had a tough couple of weeks with – I think Roval, he got two or three. Where, did he get did he get hairy here? Oh, boy. Oh, that's a haymaker, dude. That is a haymaker. Didn't even give him a chance. Oh, Harry had a good weekend going, too. I mean, Qualified why six. did he do that? He was over. The 21. Ah, yeah, yeah he's really far back. Any just, just, I mean, just haymaker. Yeah. Okay, there's one. And then, same thing. Daniel Hemrick. Daniel Hemrick. Yeesh. <laughs> You've had enough. Gets the 38. He's got a lot of immaturity, this kid. A lot of speed, but a lot of immaturity. I'll say it. Um, I like him. I think he's really fast, but... I mean, it's just somebody got him at the every end, though, week. It's something with him, and then Bowman has enough of his stuff here and just smell you. Blaney was frustrated with this one because the nine car was leading, and then the forty-eight spun the seventy-seven out. He's like, "Oh, that worked out for the nine because the nine went long." Didn't yeah, pit. but they that, at that point in time, Bowman's like, "There was a couple, there was a couple withdrawals from the account over the course of the year, and then we're going to uh, I'm gonna cash those in right quick." Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, we go to the twenty-four. Oh, the oh, the sixteen and the twenty-four is the next thing on here. I watched. SVG this. actually had a, a great day. Finished twelfth. Uh, great job, Shane. Yeah, dude. He he's. I got a hot take. I think Shane's going to be in the playoffs next year, and I think he goes fairly deep. I think he's a round of eight guy next year. He is what, but like, scrappy races like this that they're not real high speed tracks yet, like. Vegas, places like that, a little bit of a struggle because you got to figure out, like, okay, mm -hmm. it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. Races like this where car control, Breaking. scrappy, keep yourself in it, no like no penalties on pit road, mm -hmm. good restarts, put your car in good position. He is a high-level guy. And um, that's what he had wrote me a message, like, congrats. And I was just like, dude, great job. You freaking looked like a war zone out there. He's like, those are my favorite, buddy. Yeah, dude. So, but this this right here, I think Ryan was frustrated watching it because we had pet we were we had got the twenty four and it was a little bit challenging the pass. We had got underneath the twenty four and then when we caught the sixteen, the sixteen moved down mm. to let the twenty four kind of roll the top. I don't know if it was on purpose, but if you're sitting in Ryan's seat, it, it looks like it's on purpose. Yeah, right. So you well, just said, the, yeah. "All right, you gonna pull down in front of me." Two for one. Yeah. Um. But. I mean, doink, if you want to pass somebody, doink. like, it's a tale of two tapes. You could do what Hosevar does and spin him out, or you can do this. And then you got some in-car here that's a little suspect, but Shane's a higher-level guy than this. Yeah, he, he's not going to wipe, especially the guy racing for a championship out. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, uh, and then we go to the next guy that um, had a day with Christopher Bell. So Christopher Bell seemed like he had a long day. Man, I uh, I kind of feel bad. I hope, and they got it on. They had little, uh, you know, fuzzy raccoon um, audio mic above us before driver intros. I was talking to Chris Bell, SVG was sitting next to me. I'm like, man, you're pretty good point shape. Just don't suck today. Great, great advice, Corey. <laughs> this is just great, great advice. Yes, yeah, sound mm. advice. Um, I wasn't giving him advice. I was just, you know, trying to be. Uh, that is, obvious. I don't know if you, I, in my world, that is advice all day long. <laughs> don't suck today. No, I'm just pointing out <laughs> what not to do. What not to do is don't suck. That might be why he spun me out. Okay, so the, yeah, he, he did a good job missing that one. Look, if you run in the back with the squirrels, what happens, Corey? You get your nuts busted. Yeah, that's it. So he's back there, and then oh, oh this was late in the race. Um, left without a left front lug. Man, I feel for for those guys. They've been a so great. So the, the tire will stay on. Um, oh, it depends. Yeah. Oh, oh no! Oh, he, he so freaking rode that thing out not, too. I don't know why they left because they they have open mics and everything. It spits the nut out. The nut comes out of the socket, and they didn't catch it. Um, a lot of times you so, don't know that the nut came out of the socket. So is he just hitting it? and like There's there's no nut, but you can't really feel it. Um, and in that situation, man, that if they would have backed up and put the tire back on, they'd have been way further in front of where they were mm. because you have to go, you pit again, and then mm -hmm. your tail end. Tail end of the lap and cars. And then you're, you got to pass all the lap cars before you can start getting positions. I hate that for for Blake, man. I care deeply about uh, Blake Houston, their front changer, and their pit crew is a great pit crew, man. And it's just when it's you can go to the racetrack, and any day you can end up on the not top ten. Yeah, right. Like it's not a normal job. You can go there and you can have a glorious day like we did, or you can have a terrible off season, you know, and just yeah. focus on on the bad. And it's it's a big part of the job, failing fast. And I hope that they can get through it, man. I hate that for them. They are championship contenders. They, you know, they they miss out in Vegas. They have great go to Vegas, have a great day, mm. um, and they miss out just by a little bit. And uh, man, this format's just so challenging. I, I talked to Wesley Lape, their interior guy, mm. or he, he's might be more of a car chief now, but. I was talking to my home set. I said, man, I can't believe how mad Chris was when you guys crossed the finish line at Vegas. I was like, you guys had a great day. And he goes, yeah, but I said, you're like 40 the good. He goes, no, you got to bank on three winners. Like, you got to bank on having three. We're only five above Larson. And I was like, damn, like, yeah, you're right. You that was the difference. And well, he bummer. his day was not done after that, per se. I mean, he was an, in an absolute scrap. He was down three. He was down three. Four, back to one, back to even. But we're going to get there in a minute. Or do we get there right now? Um, okay, let's just stay there. Let's just stay there. He goes back. Spins goes back in the field. He had a couple close calls, and he had a loose wheel. Uh, he lost the lap because he was back there. Um, gets trapped a lap down. So um, so when you get trapped a lap down, right, when guys on the lead lap have a problem, you that's a spot you don't get. Yeah. Right? You're just racing a certain amount of cars. Right. Very interesting move at the front of the field. Oh, the 24 right. and the 5 stay on the racetrack. Yeah. Not only does uh, that give them I track want, position, but I wonder if they did that only to, to trap the 20. The 20 of Bell has no choice now. He is trapped the lap yeah. down. He has yeah. to come get tires, yeah. try to get somehow wow. get some positions and That's... get back on the lead lap. So he had a potential opportunity to wave there. Uh, what was that with like 60 to go? And then they didn't let him. That makes sense. And yeah. then and then man, I just don't Gotta understand. keep the foot on the throat. I mean, let, let's just go there before we talk about Blaney's charge. I don't understand the wall ride. While we're on Chris Bell, let's just close. Let's just close. I don't. Okay. Because because he went, he throttled up. Like you you can't do it. And I don't know what happened. I don't understand it. I think I wish if it was me, like I'm always gonna have the drivers. Um, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt always. What if his tires had so much shit on them he couldn't physically get off the wall? I mean, did his foot have shit on it because he stood on the gas and rode the wall? So I did have a couple pieces of rubber inside the cockpit that like, made my foot real sticky. Who knows that if it just stuck his throttle halfway to where he just 
I know, just think you put NASCAR in a box and you do that, and it's tough, right? Yeah. And then the whole like. I think the whole sport loses because of it because now the talking point yeah. is that not that the race was better right not the tire the, was good the talking not point the short track race was good. and then we have if you go on twitter it's five to ten minute long videos of everybody's audio from the end of the race uh, not just channel one channel two together so yeah. it sounds like the driver's getting all this information that the crew chief yeah. and the spotter are talking about mm. and it's all convoluted and it gets messy and if you don't understand it if you're a fan it just is like what this is a gimmick and it they're not seeing the full context of it, so yeah. it hurts the whole sport for sure. Um, if it's me, like if there's, the, if there's the no way three truly feels like he has a problem, pit and yeah. get and out and go. I believe it was the radiator. The radiator wasn't it, wasn't it, it Cole? Yeah, I believe like, it was. Just do that. Like just pit. Don't stop on the track. Like, damn it, dude. Like th these guys all t they the and all the drivers and I have your like I, I get it, but they all want to all over nascar all the time but then they put the sport in a bad spot right and we have to look more often than at, we they put the sport in a bad spot and then they oh uh, i don't know nascar The playoffs conclude in Phoenix, and all four championship contenders join us for inside takes on the title. Don't be on the outside, be on the inside. It's NASCAR Inside the Playoffs on True TV and Max. There's another point there to be said, too. People don't realize that there are meetings with OEMs and teams on Tuesday about instances and scenarios of what they're gonna do. So just because you might not hear something on the radio or even if the, you do hear something, there is plans set in place because there is so much financial gain to be racing for a championship if you're, one of your cars is in or out. That's not, they don't think about that 10 laps to go. That stuff's been talked about on Tuesday, on yeah. Wednesday, on Thursday. So a lot of the stuff is unsaid. And we can get into this conversation of race manipula manipulation and yada yada and two uh, two Chevys running side by side behind the behind the the twenty four so the six can't go up there and pass them. You can get it as deep down the rabbit hole of manipulation as you want to. There is some form of manipulation every week. Teammates yeah, giving teams a, a spot on a restart, speedway racing. You can you can say that whole thing is manipulation as well with green flag pit stops, whatever. I mean, with five There's, races to go in the regular season, it, if it, maybe 10 races to go in the regular season, people are, like, working together, yeah. right? And, like, you're never going to you're never going to get rid of it to a certain extent. So if you – this is – I feel like instances like this are where knee-jerk reaction rules come from yeah. that hinder the sport. I agree. And then you got to have a boys have at it conversation later. Like, I think that this all started because of Clint Boyer, itchy arm. Elbow which really was a bad night for me, but it's not about me right now. Um, and you, you just... You Why get was these, it a bad night for you? Because so I was know. changing tires on the 39 and we got beat. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, Off I just... Off pit road, too. I don't... Yes, I, I was there. I just don't... If you run this video, like, run the video, Higgy, and tell me honestly what you think. Like, I don't... I, I think you're going to pass the 23 anyway. I don't know... He got okay. He got loose, but just, you can't. Mm, yeah, like you do know you can't do that. We all, all know you can't do that. So like we can, we could sit here and if and but, but like. Question mark of who else is in has now put us all at pause, and we don't know. And NASCAR has to untangle all of this and make a decision. I don't know, man. Pretty clear. Yeah, I just don't. I think that, you know, because of what Ross did, everybody, everybody, I think what did Elton what if say? He said everybody in the sport down to the man, down to a man, like every man agreed that we're not doing that. Yeah. So everything else is null and void. We're just all trying, like it, Twitter's a firestorm because everybody's trying to make points for the mm -hmm. driver they like mm -hmm. or the team that they like or the OEM they like. Like at the end of the day, you can't do that. You can't do that, right? And they have the in-car footage. They have the SMT data to look at with throttle. Like, if he – I think NASCAR's in a tougher spot even more so if he actually, you know, bangs it down a gear or two and gets it off the wall and then drag races to the line. Do you, no, I don't think so. I think – this you might can't be a, wall ride. So, who, so then the 20 gets in if he just 
peels it off the wall and gets her home. I don't know their point situation. But they, they were tied, and then Tony had the tie. Well, we the 48 was going to pass him. So I don't know if the 48 passes him if – because he throttles up the 48s underneath him, and mm. the 16 got by him. Mm. So – I don't. Well, no, that was they were on the lead. They were they were on the oh, lead lap. He was laps. not. Yeah, the okay. only car in play here was the twenty three. Oh, then yeah. That was the difference. He's down one. Now he's even with the tiebreaker. None of these cars that pass him count. None of them. Yeah, you can't do that. I don't know other like I don't want to keep harping on him because I feel bad. Like just keep talking about it, but like man, it's it's a. For the for the better of the sport, I'm not talking about NASCAR. I'm now, not talking about just motorsports in general. Here's my maybe I already said this. My opinion on this, you know, everybody wants to about race manipulation. I think it's all fair game. Now, do it's I also game. think that it's low down <laughs> racing? I think it always comes back. Yes, to you. but it's always been part of the game. It's just the stakes are higher now. It always comes back. And the I, data and the availability for fans to kind of audit or even think that they know how the game works to an extent. They only know just enough to be dangerous. Like, there is more data that now NASCAR has to sift through to uh, police the sport. And if NASCAR is in a position to police the sport, that's usually not good for anybody. No, it stinks. They want, it stinks they want, for everyone. They want, they want it in the hand of the drivers, man, the drivers and the teams. And the teams are going to do what they can do to get their team – sometimes questionable situations or not in the best position to contend for a championship. Yeah. I, I don't feel like I know that um, I'm, I'm happy that we didn't have to deal with that at all. You know, we raced hard. But we, we had the most trouble passing forwards, whether it be the 14 or the six. I mean, we had a hell of a time passing the six all day. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, that seemed like the only car that he had a t trouble passing because he passed everybody else. Well, Jonathan Hassler comes down. And we put four tires on this thing, right? The caution comes out. Some people stay out. Some people do too. John has just put four on it. Yeah. And there was a weird situation where the eight car's wheel fell off, and we lost two spots on the choose. Oh. Uh, so like we chose. And then the inside lane rolled up. The top lane rolled up. Oh, we were on the, the bottom. And then they threw the caution, like green caution. Hang on. What what restart was that where the sixteen was right behind you? Then, like way earlier in the day. That was earlier. Oh, okay. That that wasn't a restart. Yeah, that was a uh, racing. Oh, sure. Um. So he was frustrated. Ryan was frustrated about it because we lost Indy that way. Right? Yeah, that took a that took mm -hmm. a ring out of the case. That mm -hmm. was a tough one to lose. And then you know you get set two spots back, or you know a row or two back on a restart of Martinsville. It's, huge. And it's it's huge. looks like a mile. In yeah, front oh of yeah. You. So he was mad, um, but he just you know put it on his back and there he went. And it looked like a light switch for the Hendrick cars. Like it looked like it would they would flip like a light switch where their rears gave up. Yeah. They had a good turn, good drive, and then it would go shut off. Um, the five was on old tires. Nine was on the same tires as us. No, the nine didn't put four on there. He, he pitted He pitted with us, and he we went, came out right next to him. Okay. Yeah. Because I stood up like a clown to slap our car because we had a good stop, and I saw him, and I didn't see the six or the 24 who we were like, or, you know, a couple of those guys, and I didn't realize that half of them didn't pit and half of them did too. So I was like, let's go. And I was just out there having my own party by myself because nobody else came by. Uh a little bit of contact between the 5 and the 12. Just I think that's all friendly fun. The 12 kind of gave him a door. Martin's will race, and the 5 gets him a little bumper back up the hill. Keep, keeps on going. Kyle Larson's such a stud. They asked him about it. He said, uh, they said, was what Blaney did you fair or foul? He said, that's just racing what Blaney did to me. He said, what was foul was what I did back to him. He said, that was I shouldn't have done that, but you know I was trying to buy the 9 some time. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I don't know. He's not proud of that. Like Kyle Larson's racing IQ – matches his talent he's smart and he's good dude i'm sure higgy has it but larson getting the pit road did you see that one yet no we'll cover that in boats and woes but this you know the good stuff is blaney puts the team on his back and that's that's you know we had a great week last week on pit road and you know we lost them and i and we lost the race and i was super impressed with the way ryan acted this week I was almost taken back because he came to the shop on Tuesday. Netflix came. He came to pit practice. They filmed. And he was had moved on and was unfazed. Like, yep, that happened. Moved on. Uh, and I was like, man, I, I have never seen somebody be that either confident or mature about it. It was almost like, oh, no. Like, yeah, it, 
I, I didn't know how to take it. And um, just the, he's he's got the confidence of a champion. And it was it was cool to see his maturity this week, how he dealt with it. And then his dad said something to him because Dave is a badass race car driver and he's been around it for a long time. He's like your dad, right? When, when they say something that might not make sense, but it always ends up being right. It always ends up being right. He said he always talks about the path to the championship. I heard Ryan say this in an interview. He said, the path is a little muddier now, but that's why they make cleats. And I was like, you're damn right. That's why they make cleats. Uh, and that's what I said yesterday, Victor. And I said, we got the cleats on. That's right. Uh, Blaney laced them up tight. And, uh, you know, that that's a championship. How much time do you spend, like, relishing in that win, as big as it was, given the opportunity to race for and defend the championship versus flipping the switch and focusing on Phoenix? I ate two pieces of Domino's pizza and had – a Miller Lite at his house last night. We left about 12.30, and that was it. Like, good job. Yep, cool. You know, he just lives right down the road from me. There's like five or six of us there. Good job. Yep, let's do it again. And that's yeah. it. And we're back to, you know, this today we'll do the show and be entrenched of, in what a good, you does know. It look, does this week look any different? Uh, I, yeah, a little bit. You know, you just want to put yourself in high-press situations, t- have the card conversations of what you need to do. And, and, I mean, you keep doing what's got you here. Right. But you also make sure that four drone horseshoes championship week. Forge, you got four drone horseshoes. But yeah, you put in a championship week, right? Championship week. What's that look like to you? How do you live like a champion? Right? Everybody's different. Diet, exercise. What is it? Yep. So that's it. And you go to Phoenix. When you get on that bird to Phoenix, you make sure that when you get back on that plane coming home, you're proud of everything you did, no matter how the chips fall. That's right. Uh, if you make sure that you put your best foot, if we put our best effort forth this week, and somebody beats us straight up, then then it is what it is. But as long as you Make sure that you put your best effort forward, and, and you don't get you don't get over you don't get crazy, right? You 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 don't change your approach. Yeah. I heard Pete Rose say this. I, I was watching him break down a swing, and he said, "You know, these guys get in a slump, and they change their swing. Well, your swings what got you to the major leagues, right? Just make a small adjustment. Slide your hands down the bat. Slide your hands up the bat. Take a step back off the plate. You don't change your swing." swings while you're there yeah right so that's it you know you just have small adjustments to to fine-tune stuff so that's what do you think that of all four of all the four the 22 the 45 the 24 and now the 12 do you think the 22 has a slight advantage since they've been focusing on phoenix for the last couple weeks and you guys have always been set set, sights set on 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 phoenix but you had to get through Martinsville, right? And you had to win Martinsville to advance. Do you think that the 45 and the 22 have a slight edge on preparation or it is what it is? I think it's, I think a lot of people get paid good money to talk about it sitting here. But, you know, I think that uh, there's arguments all week long who's more prepared and what what's in the media, but it just comes down to the day and who executes yeah. on the day, right? And it's, yeah, yes, you want to be prepared. You, you got, you know, they, they definitely have a leg up on that. The, the good thing for our team is that, you know, Joey's our teammate, and Penske's an open book with everybody. all work together. So the notes that they have for Phoenix, I'm sure that our guys all work together. Uh, the 45 as well. He, he's been working towards that. Toyota's going to have everything they got at the 45. 24, same thing, right? It, it could be – you could almost make an argument that they're going to be stronger because they have all of their employees from their OEM working towards One making car. that Chevrolet and that Toyota better, where we have two. But – it's all fine and dandy, and we can all talk about this, that, percentages, betting odds. comes down to who can make it happen on Sunday. One race, winner take all. Mm-hmm. So that that's what's that's what's good about it. that's what that's the gift and the curse of this sport, man. It's it's stressful. It's a whole new level of anxiety when you're watching that car lead with twenty to go at Martinsville, and then you go to Phoenix. You know, it's 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 different, but mm. one race, who's going to be? Well. I hope it's you. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. But there's a lot to break down from, from Pit Road, so let's go talk about that. This Shall time. we? Pit Road Boats and Woes. Coming up right after this. Less than this ruler determine the winner of the race. You put him in this position, and we're having the conversation today about why did every other crew chief miss the two-stop strategy? This is Formula One racing, this is road course racing, and this is also short track racing. You've only got to get the ear, just over a car width. 
Catch NASCAR Inside the Race each week on NASCAR's YouTube channel. All right, guys, time for some pit road boats and woes that potentially change the championship contenders. What we got first up? Absolutely. The big traffic jam leaving pit road here. I think we're involved in this too, 48, and then we just kind of come out of our pit stall here. We have to okay. shoot out in front of like around the 77. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. That's why you want to be at this pit yeah, road. It's so late. tight. Look at me. Look, the reason we beat him out is because I pushed the car. It's extra horsepower. Um, extra, extra manpower. Yep. Well, just the right arm. Uh, that's why it's important to be down on that side of pit road because it's so narrow that if you pull out and someone's on your outside, you just get used up. You have to lift. So kudos to Alex Bowman for. I mean, he had to lift there. You got, yeah. you got no You're choice. You're gonna wipe the left front tire off. Um, it's really sketchy being pitted down in that corner, though. The nine team is uh, running up front. They had a they had an issue similar to what the five car had at Vegas. Ooh. Oh, he dropped the nut. Um, hey, get back here. So kind of they, is this when they came in leading and kind of lost track position? Yeah. Dang. Fix it. Um, so, yeah, they lost track position. But like you said, they get it right the first time. They don't have to go tail end. So. They have to scratch and claw the rest of the race, but they end up getting back. You know, they don't lose a lap. They just yep. lose. A, it, Martinsville's so challenging, bro. He he Tell dropped a back. nut. He he lost a nut just like the twenty car did, like we like we saw before. Uh, come back. Say hey. Fix it. Move on. Uh, next one. Twelve team. I don't know what this one is. It says it's a tire contact. So we come around. What happened here, we lost a, a couple spots, lost four spots, which, and I think he hits the tire carrier on the 77. It was really close. Whoa. Oh, oh man. I went and yeah, made sure that he was. Tailed way sure out, was, too. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's our it's our fault for having a slow stop. Yeah. But the reason that there was a slower stop, because if, if we do a nine-second stop there like we know we can, we're out of there before they even get there. What happened, though, and it's something that is this it's why Martinsville is particularly hard. The cars are really low and the, the wheels are really tight in the fender wells. But another thing that happens is when the cars are really low, you have to run your jack stops lower so they don't hit the ground or the curb. And the jack stops are inside the carbon fiber. So when Jordan put his jack under, it caught the carbon fiber first, jacked the car up, then it fell off the carbon and came down onto the onto the um the jack stop mm. and it made it so when zach was pulling the left rear right when he was pulling it was going up and then came back down and drugged the ground and got stuffed because the minute with these with these wheels and tires the minute you use any momentum pulling it you're done and you just got to wrestle it out the rest of the way and it costs you seconds of time um that is something that happens at martinsville that's why i say martinsville is like trench warfare to a picker guy because there are certain things it's really hard to read the car so you're out of position all day you have to you can't rush you got to be really smooth with your poles. The lug nuts don't tend to come off or run up really quickly because of the brake dust and the heat. There's a lot of just issues that you have, a lot of distractions, a lot of challenges, which makes it tough because like at, at Martinsville, you have to be mentally prepared that like you might come in and give up four spots. You might come in and lose six spots. You just can't. You have to keep him in the race. And after you have a bad one like that it's like a watershed moment do you go good do you go bad and the next two uh, rounds of pit stops we had the fastest stops of the sequence so we were really proud of that really proud of how we reacted and uh moving forward pit road entries under green are still it's still a wild concept to me to do a full green flag cycle at, at martinsville but i'm starting to like it actually I'm starting to like it actually adds a lot of comers and goers holy Ooh. moly so the 17 peeled off late the nine got hit <laughs> holy cow so I think the nine just saw. I didn't. I don't think he knew he was pitting. So he was just going to not get put three wide middle, right? Uh -huh. He was going to go to the inside of the seventeen, merge back up. Oh my god! He about ended Chris Christopher Bell's. That's not even Christopher the bad Bushers. one. No, that's not even the bad one, buddy. So yeah, this is on board. He just sees the seventeen kind of oh. lay down black marks, and then uh huh. Yeesh. Thank God he squared him up because that could have been another situation like you had in practice. This is the bad one. Oh, dude! Did he hit the wall? 
No. <laughs> oh, Kyle Larson, dude. Oh my goodness, dude. Holy sh What? The man doesn't learn his lesson. He's or so does he? he is so crazy. I I mean he parked her in the barrels at Homestead. Yeah. But he just he is ten tens, dude, all the time. Well the problem What a thug. Doing ten tens is okay. Problem is when there's guys in front of you doing six tens. That's it. That's yeah, not bad. everybody's on the same level getting the pit road. Yeah. So you trust the guy in front of you. But dude, the fact that he didn't hit anything there is gotta be I would say ninety percent luck, but because of who he is, it's probably more like eighty percent talent. Yeah. Like the guy is just a stud. While also not speeding. While also not speeding. Yeah. Like just a lot of stuff going on. Kyle Larson doing Kyle Larson things. Yes, that was a great save to avoid a big wreck and damage to his car and keep himself in the fight. The last one, this was this was a situation that we talked about earlier, but the eight car has a loose wheel. Now, to look at the eight car having a loose wheel, we have to go back to last week when their tire changer, um, Mike Russell, he got, uh, Michael Russell, he got hit at Homestead. Mm. And it hurt his knee. Mm. He's out. Oh, no. Just had a baby. Shout Dang. out to it. Uh, yes, shout out to them guys, man. They just had a baby. Same week they get, uh, he gets hurt, and damn it, they put in a put in a backup that they have there that's not you know hasn't been to the racetrack much, doing one lug nut, and they have an issue on the right front. Let's watch it real quick. A little out of position. What's happened? Has to scoot over. Tough pull. Roll is tough and. Uh, just kind of rushed when, when the roll that's exactly what happened to me at charlotte so i feel for him you have a tough pull you doink it in the nose then you go to tighten the wheel and you take your eyes off of the lug nut for a second and you look at where the tire is and if there's a little bit of a fumble like if the wheel's not particularly flat and you don't stay on it which he stayed on it and they dropped it but that is the recipe for disaster i feel for them oh, i've had that same issue happen to me and it took us out of the Coke 600, and it was the toughest week of my professional career. Um, the bummer is they went green here, man. They saw it. They probably could have thrown the caution back out, but... They were pretty uh, quick, I thought, with, with calling it once they realized it was off. Um, okay. There. Well, we're all we're sitting here watching, watching videos of the tire yeah. come off. Yeah. Right? These guys are... You just see the accordion stack. I mean, the eight's still going. You're like, all right, we're – oh, shoot, there's an actual freaking tire bouncing on the road here. Yeah. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough for us. Oh, and there um, it is. Hey, we forgot something. Oh, the right front tire's not on it. Yeah. Brutal. Let's put it back on. Um, it's a, Man, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. And I, you know, I actually I saw terrible, I man. actually saw Kyle Busch uh, before the race. Got to, I got a picture with him, too, by the way. Did he tell you you were a liar? No. No, I saw – I got a picture of him. <laughs> This guy was walking around. We'll put it in the YouTube. Oh my god! You're this guy just... was walking around with an old M and M's Kyle Busch fire suit with a about a two foot wide circle of a crying baby face. It had me cracking. You up. are just stoking the fire. I... Oh, brutal. Um, send it in the group chat here. Yeah, I was like, I gotta get a selfie. Listen, dogs of the week. I got who, who are these guys crushed it. They've probably are you going to give it to yourself two weeks the playoffs? Or? The forty eight team, right? They, I, I talk about Martinsville pit road being super challenging, a place where there's not fast pit stops. They averaged an eight ninety nine. Oh, they crushed it. They have been a great team throughout the playoffs, um, maybe the best. So shout out to those guys, front changer Danny Tasser, dog Andrew Bridgeforth is the rear changer. It's a uh, strong name. That is a that is a strong name. Brandon Greer. Tire carrier. Oh, BG. He was on He was on the 7 last year. He's yeah. an absolute stud, dude. Alan Holman on the jack and Jacob Conley, uh, crew chief, Blake Harris. Good for those guys, man. They have been so strong. It is obviously a bummer what happened to them at Charlotte because it um, took a really good team out of contention. But, uh, but yeah, uh, another shout-out. Speaking of the Spire guys, I didn't get to talk about it last week, but the 77. Now, we don't really have a great way to track this, but we're working on it. It seems that they did... Uh, what some are claiming the fastest pit stop in NASCAR history, an 829. Now, everybody times it a little different, but nonetheless, 
The 77 last week at Homestead had a great day. They had the fastest stop maybe uh, ever in NASCAR, depending on how you break it down. I just wanted to give those guys a shout-out. They're doing a great job. Uh, and for a team that's not a house team to be doing stuff like that, man, shout-out to those guys. Keep up the good work. They were our neighbors this week, too. And, uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff going on on Pit Road. One more week to see who takes the cake. Mm, there's only going to be one. There's only going to be how's, – how's, like, the other the – other three championship teams are they hitting their stride who is showing some cracks i think everybody's great man we practice with the 22 they're a great team um 24 is a great team 45 you don't win homestead unless you're a great team uh 45 has got a lot of my good friends or old colleagues on it um wade moore on that one wade moore nathan ricketts houston stanford who i texted houston man me and houston 15 years ago we're building duck work at Roush wanting to be tire changers. Me and him built all the duck work in every car. And I said, and he, I, he texted me, he said, good job. I said, look at us. Did you look at each other one day and be like, hey, these guys that are just coming in working one day a week are making way more money than I am. It took a lot long years, a lot, <laughs> lot, lot of progression to get there. But yes, I, I just said to him, yes, I said, man, look at us. Race for a championship. Way better than building duck work. For uh, sure. So, you know, that just makes it fun. Shout out to know? the guys who build duck work, though. You got to have duck work. In I don't think they build it anymore. You just clip it Xfinity in. cars do, and they use up about every single one this weekend. Yeah, they did. Yes. Um, that's all we got for Pit Road Boats and Woes. Now we got some Penny for Your Questions thoughts coming up. Yeah, we'll penny got for Your Thoughts questions. Penny for Your Thoughts questions? Yes. That's what they are. Why'd you make a weird face, Moise? Because you said pe- que- Penny for Your Question Thoughts <sighs> or something like that. It's okay, dude. English. It's, it's fine. It's it. What is your favorite trophy design? That is from Ryan Lewis Pylon. Pylon. I don't um, know how to say your name. I'm sorry. I think there's a couple that are, are sweet. Well, the Harley Jarrell is just awesome because they talk about a trophy. But I like that. Um, grandfather clock's cool. It's just unique. But I wouldn't really call that a trophy. I would just call it a clock with a sticker on it that tells you what race you won. Um, the hot take, cold take, lukewarm take, but that's fine. When, you're, when, when, I, when my, your grandmother can have the same Ridgeway clock in her house, it doesn't have the sticker on it, though, nor the champagne on it. You can't go get a Harley J. Earl trophy and put it next to your ficus in your living room. So I would consider that a, a, a I'm gonna clock. Give you guys a hand. I took a, put a picture of it up on my Instagram. The clock that they use for Victory Lane is beat up. It's the same one. It's the and same just, one they, like every year, and it's beat up. Yeah. The and there was a guy standing behind it holding it the whole time. Shout out to him. He's holding it so it wouldn't fall over. The clock watcher. Um. I like the Talladega one with that dude holding the, the 100 pound hammer. trophy. That's a cool one. That is a cool one. I'll, I'm going to go. I got to say it. I got to say it. Kansas needs to just. <laughs> whatever whatever paperweight they have for a trophy. What is it? Oh my God, dude. It's brutal. It looks like something you get a Hobby Lobby. It's about this tall. Get some good stuff at Hobby Lobby. Great stuff. All these, most of these frames are for the jerseys behind me. Your hobby lot, a lot of great stuff. You don't go reward your Kansas Cup winner. Pull this up. Okay. Imagine having a perfect day and just busting your ass, and they give Kansas you Kansas so hard to win. They give you this thing. Um, it. I mean, what if it was bigger? That's what my wife says every week. Uh, it would probably be better though. Yeah. She, when, when, she keep looking, when she looks at the Kansas Speedway, that's what she says. Guys, get your head out of the gutter. Um, um, that one needs some work. There's some great ones. I like the Roval, the Roval glass Roval one they cool. have. Roval trophy's it's cool. It's like this. Coke 600 it's, trophy's cool. Yeah. Um, obviously, Southern 500 trophy's cool. I think uh, Pocono's trophy, the Eagle, is underrated. Sick. Yep. That one's sick. Um, Iowa, I think, had a cool trophy. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I like I like all trophies. Yeah, the yeah. the guitars in Nashville are pretty cool. A all little less prestigious though, because you can go buy a guitar then they put a paint job on it. Have Greg from Off Axis paint it. And you can have it's the exact same thing. Prestigious if Greg paints your helmet or your guitar. That's fair. I, I like. All right, that's enough for that one. This Sunday. Four drivers will battle for the NASCAR Cup Series Championship at Phoenix Raceway. Join us for the Phoenix pre-race show as we talk live with the Championship Four, plus other celebrities and special guests, as we get ready to make history and crown the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series Champion. 
Catch it all Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on NASCAR's YouTube, Facebook, and X. Do you plan on racing the Snowball Derby again, Nathan Danforth? Hell no! no. We're not going. <laughs> no, kid, kids definitely put a, a wrench in my off-season plans. I would, I love that race. It's so fun. The the way Super Late Model Racing has evolved, and there's so many good teams and cars and drivers, that it's hard to show up one race a year with your own stuff and try to think you can go be competitive, and it costs a lot of money to go drive for a team that is competitive and does it every week, but that's the only way to go do it. I would love to. I had a couple people ask me this this week, actually, if I was planning on doing it. The answer at the moment is no. Dang it. Yeah, uh, we had a lot of fun doing it, but, yes, we have kids and stuff. Funny so. story. Um, my co-host and I may or may not have shared a bed at one point in the time in our, in our oh, snowball Oh, dude, derby. yeah, we go to the snowball derby, and I get there, and it's like, our buddy Scott Creel, shout out Scott Creel, had us. An a time, he had a timeshare in Orange Beach. A waterfront apartment yep. in Orange Beach, right right next Condo. to Floribama, if you've ever been to the big bar, the one that they sing yep. about. Um, right next, like walking distance. I get there, I get there like Saturday. I couldn't come down. I got there like Friday or Saturday. I was late. You guys were down there for like a week. And I was penny pinching. I was a car owner. Yeah, I stay in bed with you. We stay in, a, it's a big bed, put a pillow. <laughs> this guy stole all the covers in the middle of the night. Yeah. I we had separate blankets. Took mine. It was freezing cold. It was terrible. So I'm never going. Never going. Uh, I, yeah. Never going back. And next one, from it's me underscore Moorhead. Why did y'all let Blaney hit me on pit road? I was oh, it's Jarius Moore. It's uh Jarius the tire carrier on the 77. We were just talking about. That's a big. That's a big fella. It's my. It's our fault, man. Should we should have had a faster pit stop? I, we take the blame for that one. Jarius, but good job being a it's dog. Me. It's E Moorhead. It's me, Moorhead. What's it's up, me. Jarius? Shout out. Yeah, thanks for writing in, too. Um, you thugged it, though, man. Picked the tire back up. I Stuck the right is, rear. And, hey, like we just said, fastest stop in history, the 77 guys. Shout out to them. Yeah, dogs. Uh, Ludwig, Jackman for the 7. Become a friend of mine every week. We're always trying to catch up. But he, this weekend, he he's... His nickname is Bulldog because he's built like a bulldog, and he's, his calves are literally generally double the size of SVGs. And SVG has double the size of normal man's calves. They're unbelievable. Like These footballs. ones are quadruple the size of a normal human's. I can't even exaggerate how big this man's calves are. It's got veins in it and stuff. They're, they're things of glory. Oh, boy. And he, like, like gave me, like, a little bit of, like, a, a, like a, a headlock this weekend. And I tried to do like the old like turn your shoulder and like pick his feet off the ground, and it was like he was an oak tree, bro. You realize I, I do it too. I mess with these. I in the gym every day with these football players. You realize that we're just not the same type it's of human. It's a different species. Bro. Like, oh, okay. Hey, oh, yeah. That was funny. Built different. I That's like it. I was even like, Arr! and he was just like, what? What are you? What are you doing? Yeah. Built yeah. different. Yeah. I I can't. He gave me his jack one time to try to lift it up. Yep. Yep. I, you just can't. You can't jack a car up. Nope. Just don't even try. Um, I'd be, got a penny stacker this week? I mean, it seemed like the easy job is change tires, so I'd probably try my hand at that. That's it. It's the easiest one. Don't um, tell me, buddy. <laughs> uh, two penny stackers this week. Uh, a lot of people were at uh, Martinsville t- saying they had a lot of the show. Uh, who was the one that has... What's her name with the tattoo? Gasoline rubber and victory on her. Oh, Hannah. Hannah, shout out her. She's a penny stacker. She's she a has a penny stacker of the year last year. She was. It's a big honor. If you get a tattoo, um, who's the other fellow with the 51 tattoo on his arm now, too? I know exactly. Michael Boss. his face, Michael Boss. He is definitely in the running for. He's penny stacker of the year. This he's year. penny stacker Michael of the year Boston, this year penny for sure. Penny of the year. I'm giving it to you right now. But who is penny stacker of the week? Penny stacker of the week, there's two of them. And both of them, coincidentally, they didn't come here together. Are from Toronto, Canada. Okay. Um, so there was, I walk, I parked at the little old lady's house at the top of the hill there at Martinsville. Josh Williams' grandmother gave her thirty bucks. She didn't even Josh cut Williams me a deal to go park there. Normally I just give her a hat or something, but no, she was, you know, she's trying to get her money's worth. So I give thirty bucks to park there, so I can go work that day. And it's kind of like last year when they made us pay for parking at the NASCAR building, go do the show every week. That's kind of like what I felt like when I rolled in Sunday. 
And well, you have hard car. Let me, let me just say, you have hard car parking. You just don't want to park there because you'll never get out. Well, there's do lot. They hold it for like two hours. Yeah. So, park at the top of the hill. I just start walking down that main street where all like the little you know gypsy tents and all the random stuff are. There's two young people, uh, a little younger than me, walking down. He had like a little racing sweatshirt on, of like, you know, a short track logo or something. His girlfriend was with him. And we just started talking. Hey, man, Corey. Yeah, yeah. Listen to the show. It was his girlfriend's first race. They drove down from Toronto to Martinsville. Drove down on Friday. Connor. It's in there. Says, Connor Jones. He's suspended, buddy. Not that one. Oh, I don't know. He's trying no, to squeak no. his way back in. No, no. Penny Stackers of the Week. I saw, his, I saw that Connor Jones' face on NASCAR's uh, – the most wanted list. I saw it. I saw it on the most wanted <laughs> list this week. Outside the track. Do not let this guy in. It wasn't. He's suspended. Yep. It wasn't him. Okay. Different Connor Jones. Maybe his name's been correct. But I think it's Connor Jones. Um, says he listens to the show. He asks if he can buy the that black and copper stack and pennies hat. I was wearing that. And he said, man, where, where can I buy that hat? I said, correlatoracing.com. I said, better better what? I looked, took my hat. Like, Am I having a decent hair day? He said, yeah. I said, you just have this one then. So I gave him a hat. Let's go. Man of the people. You know, do what I can. Get one, get them one, one at a time. Uh, so shout out to Connor Jones. There's another one. Didn't I fire off another? Uh, hey, in, in I, my penny stacker this week is Sean Brennan. Speaking of giving out merch, he sponsored Big it. time sponsor this week on Jack Woods number 91 Alpha truck. That Vision. thing looks sick. It did look sick. It was, uh, it was cool. So good. Man, I wish he gave out merch like you do because I still have got a switch here. But. From Alpha Vision? Not a man of the people. Um, there was another one from Toronto as well. This one had an interesting story. Cameron, he had a seven hat on. He had a seven shirt on. I need to get my man some new merch. But he drove from toronto to homestead miami last week let's go i don't know how long the drive is i think it was like 26 or 7 hours or something literally drove down went to the race last week spent a couple of days in fee, uh florida drove up to martinsville canadians ain't toronto. scared it's like it's cory nowhere fast yeah Corey takes pictures living his damn his van down by the river taking pictures living the dream just canuck dude crushing it and it's Making like us all look cool like canadians are like oh how long you ask how long the ride? Oh, you know, not not bad. It's only twenty eight hours. <laughs> Did with my family of four and a Ford Explorer, yeah. <laughs> and my two Saint Bernards. Just hopping to skip, you know. Like Canadians are built different, bro. Yeah. They take they take a twenty eight hour car ride like I drive home. Just a couple of three minutes. miles. Yeah, not bad. Three yeah. days. Uh, so shout out to Cameron from Toronto as well. So appreciate your support of the sport, support of the sport as well as the show stack of pennies. Um. Yeah, you guys continue to, you know, make us want to keep showing up here and doing this show. It's a lot of fun. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Couple, what, else, what other shout-outs? Couple shout outs? Shout outs, uh, Yeah, we already did it. Good year. We got Champ 4's Infinger, Eckes, Heim, Majeski. Who you got? Gosh, I'd love to see the finger get it done. I'm going uh, – I'd like to see finger get it done. But I also like Scotty Zip, so I'm going Corey Heim because they should have won it last year, I felt like. But – Man, I can't say that. I got to go with Infinger too because Timmy Feeds was spots for. Does him. he? So, yep, that's I'm going. Timmy Feeds just a good old, good old boy. Timmy Feeds, Champ Four Xfinity, Hill, Almondinger, Allgaier, Custer. Mm, Allgaier was on an absolute heater the first race of the year. Blue left for a tire. Mm. So I would like to see Justin Allgaier as long as he's been in the in the Xfinity series. One of the the ultimate saturday badasses i'd love to see him hoist the big trophy i'm right there with you his eighth season getting his helmet painted uh harper his daughter and greg do a helmet paint every year for the playoffs they've had some really cool ones this year it's got a horseshoe on it um i am all in for all guy now hey that's nothing against cole custer he was a champion last year no, or Sh- shooting for back to back all guy that's it austin hill but i'm going with the seven and, and al guy this week we're riding with Justin. Mm-hmm. Can you grind your gears this week? Or are you good? My gears are well lubed. They are I'm good. Good to go. I love that. You're gonna need them lubed up this week. Uh, no, yeah, nothing. To grab my gears. Uh, there is nothing more that I can tell you that I'm looking forward to than see the checker flag drop of Phoenix. This year has absolutely sucked. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of highs and a lot of lows. Um, I'm excited for a bit of a 
relaxation, not think about racing for a couple of weeks. Copy. A couple of big meetings coming up in the next couple of days. We'll see. Well, as always, we'll have spare change for you this week, and then we will close the year out, hopefully in here as champions again next week. So make sure you join us. That'd be that'd be good. That'd be great. It'd be better than good. Better than good. Uh, spare change this week. Arctic ice cold giveaway. How many hot dogs? Did, I'll answer it right now as well as in the video you'll see on at underscore stack and pennies to win your to win your Arctic merch. What do you, how many do you think? 12. Not that many. Dylan Crow said, uh, I sent him a picture of me eating them. Uh, one, and he said double digits or bust. And then I responded double digits and then bust because if you go double digits, you're not <laughs> yeah, going to be in a bad, you're going to be in bad shape. How many? Uh, Jeff, am I allowed to tell one of my Martinsville hot dog jokes on this show? Yes, you can tell it. We can always cut it out. So every time I ate a hot dog this week, over the course of the weekend, I would respond with a Martinsville hot dog joke. My favorite is a Martinsville hot dog is like. So how many hot dogs was it, Corey? So I had three on Saturday. Okay. And they went down like pow, pow, pow. It might have even took two minutes to eat them. They went down so smooth. They were nice. Uh, room temperature too really gets oh, the, not the too hot not flavors too to mix so then since leanne and i got in an argument during during the race about me standing in line at the hot dog stand to get hot dogs she had a bag of four uh in the lounge after i got out and i ate four hot dogs watching the end of the seven race. seven was lucky the number. number seven yep Mm, okay. Seven dogs. Hopefully you guessed it right. Hopefully they left my Martinsville joke in there into the show for y'all so I get a little laugh. Um, that's all I got. Like, download, share, rate, review, do all the things. Follow at underscore stag and pennies on Instagram. What else we got? Oh, yeah. Hey, there's one last race this year, guys. And we're going to be crowning three champions this, this week at Phoenix for the Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Cup Series. And the Cup Series is r- rifling off at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Always confused on what time that is in Phoenix because it's mountain time. So I believe that's 1 p.m. Yep. It's going to be wild, and you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be good stuff. Appreciate you guys for tuning in all this year. Hope you guys have enjoyed it, and you guys are going to enjoy this championship race in Phoenix. And good luck to Ryan Blaney and Ryan Flores and that 12 crew as they roll in to defend their championship. And thank you guys for tuning in. This is Stag and Penny. So y'all have a great day.